Hi all, welcome to topic two, part two of our deeper look into insects. So we've looked at the anatomical features character, characteristic to arthropods and, and the class insecta beneath that. Now we're going to look at particularly relevant insects to vineyards. Um, Insects which are broken up here into those without wings, the A pterygota, A P T E R Y G O T A, the exo pterygota, those of which those which are formed are born, sorry, with their wings on the outside of the insect, and whose young resemble the adults, just mini me versions of the adults, and then the endo pterygotes, where the wings form on the inside of the young before they pupate into adults. Um, and in these insects, that they undergo complete metamorphosis. Their young do not resemble the adults. And a classic example of that would be the butterfly, who has a caterpillar, which then pupates via a chrysalid into the adult butterfly. So the class insect itself is divided into 33 orders. Remember, order is beneath class in the hierarchical classification of life. Uh, but we're only going to be looking at a subsample of these 33. Um, and insects in a particular order, of course, as we know, um, must share common characteristics. And that why, that's why they're in the same order. Uh, remember, they're pigeonholed into gradually ever more specific uh, pigeonholes, the more you get down in the hierarchical scale of classification. So first of all, we've got the primitive insects, those which are still on Earth today, but represent what insects look like uh, before the evolution of uh, wings, for example. These insects are wingless, and therefore they are the A-pterygota. They show little change during metamorphosis, so their young resemble the adults. And unlike the adult exoterigotes or endoterigotes, the winged insects, these sometimes molt after they've reached sexual maturity, whereas the, the exoterigotes and endoterigotes, uh, both the, the winged sets of winged insects, molt as they progress through their instars uh, during their juvenile phase before reaching an adult phase where they don't molt again. So we'll look at a couple of primitive insects to start. First of all, <coughs> pardon me, there's order Calimbola. These are the springtails. Um, these are found in leaf litter and, and sort of damp places around the vineyard. Generally quite small. There was, they in many ways resemble a, a flea with a, a, a large tail, uh, like a kangaroo, if you like, uh, that juts out the back and allows, the, as the name would suggest, the insect to spring. They're wingless, but this... Spring tail is believed to possibly be the precursor to the wings or the precursor to flight that we see in the rest of the insects. This um, terminal abdominal appendage, so an appendage at the final segment of the abdomen, uh, is called the furta. Um, uh, that's being the plural, uh, furcular being the uh, singular. Um, they have six segments and they're entonathic in that their mouth parts actually are on the inside like ours. They're sort of recessed within the head. Um, they don't have spiracles or trachea, whereas gas exchange just occurs directly from the outside to the inside. And they don't have compound eyes, only the simple eyes like found in spiders. And the tarsi, the feet on the leg, uh, is formed in a, in a type of claw. Uh, a classic example of the springtail is the loosened flea, which causes uh, significant amounts of damage. Uh, order Zygentoma, the silverfish, often more of an issue in the winery office than the vineyard, uh, again found in leaf litter, also found living alongside ants and termites in their um, colonial mounds, quite small again, five millimetres. Uh, they have, they don't just have simple eyes, they have compound eyes, but they're quite small, so they don't have excellent sight. 
And remember that the less omatidia that a compound eye has, the less of the eyesight. They have long cerci at the back. Um, these are those uh, sort of spines that we can see off the back of the insect there. Covered in scales, unlike the plates found on your classic arthropod exoskeleton. And apologies for the spelling mistake there. Uh, they're wingless and they have a flattened body. Let's hope I can spell flattened under pressure. There we go. Added that extra E in. Um, and they eat any organic matter, including paper. At the front, unlike the, the recessed mouth parts of the Columbula, the, the springtails, they have mandibles, sort of large and biting and chewing um, mouth parts underneath the labium. I see the two primitive orders that we're interested in, the springtails and the silverfish. And now we're moving into the winged insects, the hemimetabolous or exoterogotic insects, or those that undergo an incomplete life cycle where they're the nymphs, the young, resemble the adults. And the hollow metabolous insects, the endoterigotes, that undergo a complete life cycle, complete metamorphosis. And in this case, the wings formed internally in the larvae. So first of all, the hemimetabolous orders. <coughs> Pardon me again. Um, we're going to look at Odonata, Orthoptera, Phasmida, Dermaptera, Dictyoptera, Isoptera, Hemiptera, and Thysanoptera. First of all, the stunning insects of the order Odonata or the dragonflies generally reside in uh, water and grassy areas. There's over 5,000 described species of dragonflies, so they're quite diverse, uh, but nothing went no. Nah. Nothing near uh, the beetles. They have large compound eyes, and that's that makes sense because they're extremely fast and accurate flies, and also predators. So we'd expect that they'd have extremely good eyesight. They've got huge mandibles on their chewing mouth parts, which again suggests that they're a carnivorous insect. Uh, two two pairs of large separated membranous wings that can't be folded. You can see these wings here, one set at the top and one at the bottom. There's no overlap, which allows them to move, not independently, but clearly from each other. It allows rapid movement. Um, important predator, both as a larvae and an adult. And interestingly, the, they have aquatic larvae, which are referred to as naiads, N-A-I-A-D-S. So it's their aquatic. So we need a dam. Uh, on our property to encourage the order Odonata into our vineyard. But an important predator they are. Uh, order Orthoptera, the grasshopper, and we saw in the last part of this topic that this is a classic example of an insect that goes through an incomplete life cycle because the, the nymphs, the early nymphs of the grasshopper look like cute little uh, miniature versions of the adult grasshopper we see here. The adult grasshopper renowned for the large uh, upper leg, which provides them with the um, the hop, the characteristic hop. But of course they also have wings, um, which for a grasshopper, namely allows them to disperse, especially when they are in their locust swarming form. Um, they can grow up to 10 centimeters large um, and these thickened leathery, uh, these, these, the forewings of, of this insect um, are not sclerotized and fully hardened, but they are quite leathery, which suggests that they're not, they're not super adept at flying as something, say, the, which would suggest a trade-off um, between flight and the extra energy that's gone into creating those legs, or well, the evolutionary energy that's gone into creating those uh, expanded hindquarters on the legs there for hopping. Um, they're sometimes camouflaged, uh, but the, one of the key features um, uh, is a thickened ridge on the ab abdomen of the um, insect, which they rub their legs over to create that clicking sound. Um, it's not, as some people think, clicking the legs together. Um, it's actually the leg clicking over a cuticular uh, ridge on the abdomen. Uh, they're mostly herbivorous, um, some are herbivorous and carnivorous, so omnivorous. 
um, and some rare examples are predatory, but generally herbivorous, and certainly in Australian agricultural settings, nearly always herbivorous. Um, and some of the clues that, that they are herbivorous are that the wings aren't fantastic, but the mouth parts are those sort of chewing, gripping and ripping mouth parts. Um, as well as the hind legs isn't really characteristic of something which um, of an organism that requ required really refined um, predation, so chasing an organism, um, is a little bit difficult when you've got poor wings and also indelicate legs, uh, if I put it that way. About 13,000 described species of the order Orthoptera or the grasshopper. Phasmida, the insect people, uh, a lot of people know and a lot of people love. You can see the stick insect there hanging off the bottom of the twig. It almost looks like there's a stick insect on top. That's the genius of that photo, but the stick insect hanging off the bottom there. Habitat shrubs and trees, and so, but they are often found in vineyards and they can actually um, do mass defoliations of agricultural systems, but it's quite rare um, in Australian agricultural systems. Uh, however, it is possible, but there are some uh, important carnivorous um, stick insects, though, that can play an important, important beneficial role in a vineyard. But you'll never get the stick insects if you don't have habitat, so conservation headlands, or nature strips, if you like, around the vineyard. Up to 30 centimetres in size, so they can be quite huge, and they've got highly adapted camouflage, of course, where they adapt to look like vegetation. Uh, extremely reduced wings, especially compared to the size of the organism. So they're not really attuned to highly maneuverable flight. The earwigs, nothing to do with ears, as the name would suggest, it just comes from an old English term, the order Dermaptera, sclerotized or hardened, in other words, posterior forceps or, or cerci there on the last, the terminal segment of the abdomen, generally about one centimeter in size or lower. The forewings, um, here is tegmina or hardened forewings. The hind wings are semicircular and more membranous. So again, there's a trade-off with their flight. So they're not, they're not a predatory flighted insect. Uh, there's about a thousand described, uh, but there's probably a lot more out there. This is hard to find and not generally of a lot of commercial interest. Nocturnal, um, omnivorous scavengers. It is interesting that they can, well, they are known to be a pest of vineyards, certainly introduced varieties, oh, sorry, introduced species from America. Um, they haven't been known to eat the fruit of Australian grapevines, but they have been known to um, eat new and emerging leaves uh, early in spring, which can lead to um, quite a messy appearance of the leaves. There's no recorded evidence, evidence of them reducing yield um, but it may just be that it hasn't fully been quantified. So they are, well, certainly species of them are herbivorous, either all the time or at times, and they are known to be in grapevines, but only damaging when they're in high numbers. And at the moment, it's not known whether or not that is economically damaging. Or... Uh, Blatodia, cockroaches, more of a nuisance, again, in um, dwellings and the like. And again, I can't spell flattened, So I should probably get that right. It did occur to me that I just spelled it incorrectly again on that previous slide. I'm going to go back and restore some pride in myself. Um, let's find that previous one. Dear me. Jeez, well, at least it's not recorded for all time. Uh, yes, it is. So... Um, cockroach is not known to be a pest of vineyards per se, but maybe potentially wineries, and, and certainly I've, I've seen cockroach problems in wineries before. Not where it's going to taint a wine, but certainly a nuisance, and they can get in things like demijohns or small variable capacity tanks um, and potentially taint a wine from there. Wings can be absent, but generally are there and folded onto the back of the organism. Praying mantis or the mantids, uh, characteristically have those instead of having the um, hindquarters like in the 
grasshopper that are highly enlarged, the forearm, if you will, of the front legs of the mantid are highly enlarged, with the tarsi uh, specialised into these sort of scythes, these, these spears at the end which they use for capturing their prey, and also for the female for killing the male following cop, uh, copulation. Predatory insects, but generalist predators, they'll have a go at both beneficial insects and pest species, but they can be quite useful as a complement to the overall beneficial insect population in the vineyard. And generally, if you've got them in there, it's a good sign that you've got a healthy, um, healthy vineyard system. Um, you've probably got other beneficial predators in there as well. Isoptera or termites, interesting one, not generally one we think about in the eastern states of Australia, but certainly in the northern states um, with their mounds. The mounds uh, of great architectural significance, of course, because they're, the termites are ma managed to orientate those to make sure they maintain a constant and uh, hospitable internal temperature within the, within the mound. Small soft wings, depending on the cast and Termites come in three different castes, the workers, the soldiers, and the reproductives. Um, the soldiers and the workers are generally sterile, and so they just one caste or one subsection of the termite community, if you will, um, are the ones which reproduce. Over 2,000 species described, and that gets getting more and more, so we're able to separate them better with DNA technology. Um, but also a lot of work goes into termite science because they're such an interesting... Interesting insect type. The casts themselves give us some good clues about the about the use of different anatomical features. So, for example, the workers they're blind, so they don't have to look for for prey. Um, they just have to follow chemical cues for nest building and the like. And they have a lot of, sort of normal sized mandibles for for gripping inert material. The soldiers, on the other hand, which have a combat and, well, let's say, a carnivorous role, really, um, because they're after living things, generally sterile again, blind, which is interesting, and wingless, but they have powerful enlarged mandibles. So they're blind, so they're following chemical signals when they're looking for their prey, inverted uh, quotation mark, but they have extremely large mandibles, which is typical of a carnivorous insect. The reproductives, on the other hand, which do fly, and they fly to, to ensure that there's gene flow within termites, so genes from one mound go to another, so they're not just uh, inbreeding all the time. They have fully formed compound eyes. So the, the cast, which has wings, also get the compound eyes, uh, which is suggestive that those with large compound eyes are generally the flighted ones that have to do some sort of intricate flying. Hermiptera, which are the true bugs, include the aphids, cicadas, leafhoppers, and the scale, which form little colonies on leaves. These are known for their stylets or sucking mouth parts they have. So their mouth parts um, are fused together into tubes. Um, the hermipterans have a stylet which is on the anterior or top of the head. The homopterans have their stylet at the bottom of the head. Hemipterans are generally the carnivorous ones. Homopterans are generally the herbivorous ones. They're mostly plant feeders, but there's some blood suckers. Um, and of course, the as I said before, the homopterans are the uh, herbivorous ones and the hemipterans are the carnivorous ones. So if you do find a true bug, and if you look where the style position is, it can give you a good idea uh, about the role that's going to play in the vineyard because we want the carnivorous ones which can be fantastic beneficial insects we don't want the herbivorous ones so an example of a homopteran the herbivorous true bugs would be the aphids for example all aphids are homopterans they all have their style at the bottom of the head all herbivorous flies and optera or the thrips thrips can be extremely annoying thrips both can damage fruit, um, but they can also transmit uh, plant viruses as well as fungal spores from one plant to the next. They're generally very small. In our insect sampling, we'll find a lot of them. Uh, wings are extremely narrow, um, but that's what you'd expect from such a small insect. 
um, and they have a stylet. So just like the true bugs, these also have stylets too, and hence it's the way that they um, spread diseases because they insert their style into the flow of plants. Some of them can actually be pollinators moving from one flower to the next, but that can also see how damage can occur. So sometimes the pollinators can actually cause damage, and so those which are going between grapevine inflorescences uh, can actually reduce the yield or at least the structure of a cluster. Um, they can be herbivores or predators. Right, so they they were the ones that go through an incomplete life cycle where the young resemble the adults. Now look at the hollow metabolites or endoterigotes or those that go undergo an, in a complete metamorphosis where the young don't resemble the adults. Neuroptera, the lacewing is one of my favourites. Um, an important predator as a larvae and an adult, but probably most importantly as a larvae where they're known as the ant lions. Um, and these guys can absolutely decimate scale and aphid populations um, in a short number of days. Look at those wings, those membranous wings, which suggest they're fantastic flyers. The larvae, interestingly, have sucking mouth parts, whereas the adults have carnivorous mouth parts. Just go back to that one there. Um, and you can sort of see the mandibles there on the predatory adult lacewing. The beetles, which is one of the most abundant and diverse insect um, orders, Coleoptera, nearly 400,000 described species. Um, and while I remember, actually, I should point out, again, as a personal pride uh, issue here, that I did manage to spell flattened correctly in the order Thysinoptera slide. Um, so Coleoptera, Coleoptera, the beetles, renowned for their hardened elytra, so super hardened forewings. So the classic hardened elytra, um, which suggests that they're, they're sort of, they've got compromised flight, um, and also a lot of them may be uh, carnivorous, um, and certainly the ones that are carnivorous have these huge mandibles, um, like this rhinoceros beetle here. Tutorial will have a look at the difference between uh, the order Scarabidae and Carabidae and how we can use some of the um, anatomical features of these two to determine what role they play in an agricultural environment and how that analysis wasn't done, which led to um, ongoing ecological disaster in the northern parts of Australia. The order Diptera, the flies and mosquitoes. Their larvae are known as maggots. The flies have sponging mouth parts. The mosquitoes have piercing and sucking mouth parts that we know all too well. But they both have reduced hind wings known as halteries. Some interesting are uh, viperous. Just add a spelling mistake to the uh, the list. Some are viparous, uh, which means they give birth to live young. Um, excellent flying ability, and it, which is characteristic of an organism which has excellent eyesight, which they do. And there's a classic, classic image of the eye of a dipteran. Next slide here, we see the alternate version. That previous one there showed the sponging mouth parts of the dipteran. And here we've got the mosquito, and you can see the style of it at the front piercing. In this case, it is a uh, herbivorous um, mosquito form of dipteran. Dipterans can also be predators in the vineyard as well. So there's some beneficial flies, which are extremely important, um, laying their eggs on generally the larvae of their prey. Then the eggs hatch and they consume the larvae they're sitting on. Can be great predators of things like moths. Look at the back here, you can see the halteri. Look at that club shaped appendage on the back of the fly, of the dipteran, sorry. Lepidoptera, the butterflies and moths. Here's this fantastic image of the coiled proboscis. And again, a well attuned flyer with this fantastic compound eye. 
um, found near pollen sources, sucking mouth, sucking mouth part of course, which gets extended by being filled with the hemocyl or the circulatory fluid. Um, nectar feeders and pollinators, but can be important pests as well. Uh, think about the light brown apple moth. Moths generally are white and butterflies coloured, but not always the case. One way to tell them apart is through the antenna, uh, but most simply that butterflies hold their wings above themselves when they're at rest and moths hold them to the side. Butterflies have long and slender antenna, ending in a knob, whereas the moths generally have a frillier type of antenna. And here we'll finish with the hymenoptera, the ants, bees and wasps. Like the wasps, what a fantastic predator in the vineyard where they um, generally lay their eggs inside and on the outside of the larvae of pest species, um, especially lepidopterans. The eggs hatch and they consume the eggs or larvae they've been laid on. Um, they nearly always have a distinct waist, so the second abdominal segment uh, is reduced down to what's described as a waist, so a real narrowing. Um, Solitary or social insects, many are important predators, and I should point out that it was remiss of me. When I talk about the importance that wasps play as predators in the vineyard, I should have pointed out when we talked about the coleopterans, the beetles, how important the lady beetles are as predators as well. Um, over a dozen species of beneficial uh, beetle uh, in Australian vineyards, um, not just the red and black lady beetles that we know and love. 